Hey everybody, it's Kevin Hogan from the Gold Prospectors Association of America, and welcome to September, or as we're calling around the office this year, September. It is the celebration, the month-long celebration of our founder, George Buzzard Massey's birthday. And this year, we are pulling out all the stops. You know, we give away a lot of gold throughout the year, but this month, we are giving away a lot of gold. Let me tell you how it works. If you are joining the GPA for the first time as, a, as an annual member, or if you're an annual member and you're renewing your membership, you're going to get the $15 gold back right off the bat. We're just gonna send that to you. But you're also going to be eligible for a gold nugget that at today's spots worth about $250. It's a pretty good incentive to renew or join. If you are joining as a GPA, a paid in full lifetime member, or if you're upgrading every any level of your GPA membership to a paid in full lifetime, not only are you going to get the now famous $500 gold can, which is already loaded full of gold, you are also going to be eligible for the gold nugget one a day for the rest of the month that at spot price today was just a little bit under $500. Incredible opportunities. Pick up the phone and call the GPA office and talk to any member of the member services team. We'll get you set up with your new membership, your renewal, or your upgrade. It's a great way to get some gold before you go out on your next outing. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, we've been, I got the guys out here and we're doing a little bit of dredging and high banking and showing you what they're doing this week and uh, oh, we, I got a couple of things I want to talk to you about. I want to talk to you about our heritage here. Uh, you know, there's some things that are important to me. Uh, you know, ladies and gentlemen, uh, the old timers, they come into this country in the 1850s and there was 1500 or so in this spot that we're at here and they came down, they worked the creek and the river and they took out a hundred million dollars in gold from their sweat and their efforts across in the country and around the isthmus and through the Panama Canal there and, and, and walking into this country after they come up the Sacramento River from San Francisco and they worked hard to get the gold. It didn't, they didn't get it easy. You don't get it easy today either. And uh, that gold, that wealth that was produced from the ground made possible the Industrial Revolution that gives us the the, um, the wealthy country that we have today, you know, and without wealth, ladies and gentlemen, you cannot make those ideas happen. A guy that wants to borrow money, if a country has no collateral, you know, they won't loan the money, and, and, and the European countries wouldn't, and, and uh, so we brought that wealth out, and we had that gold, and that was the sweat on the backs of those guys, and that made possible this great wealthy country, and, and made possible those ideals of of, of every man being equal and, and uh, you know, every man having the right to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. And when someone takes someone else's life, they should pay with their own. And there shouldn't be all this stuff of them sitting there in a, in a uh, prison forever with appeals either because that brings an awful burden to the rest of us. You know, you have, as an individual, a right to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. And life, of course, is the key. And when someone takes the life, from another person, they have robbed their most precious asset from them. And that's, it's, a, it's a shame today that people do that in such regularity and without any care or morals at all. If you're a teenager out there watching this show, you get out in the outdoors. When you go prospecting, uh, you may not find a whole lot of gold, but whatever gold you find is adding to the wealth of the nation. And you will add to your own personal wealth because a little pick and shovel work, a little commune with nature, Getting out there doing a little digging and turning over a few rocks is going to make a better person out of you and it's going to give you a lot of common sense and that's what's missing today. You know you go down you see a movie like Indiana Jones or something you see uh, all this uh, beautiful stuff and the people never even get dirty. Well when you're out here prospecting you're going to get dirty, you're going to get bit by a mosquito, you're going to get visited by a bear probably and you're going to have to be smart to survive and that's what it's all about ladies and gentlemen. And it's good for you. It's 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 good all the way around. It's good for the whole nation, and and it'll make you think about things like uh, our constitution and so forth because of our rights of access to public land is threatened today. You know, they uh, Babbitt and, and bonehead bumpers and that bunch. They blame all of the old 
mine dump spills and everything, all of the pollution on the 1872 mining laws, and I've often wondered why they do that. Maybe it's just because they're stupid. Uh, maybe it's because they're misguided. Uh, I don't think they're stupid. Maybe they're misguided, but if they're misguided, they must be awful devious. Because let me tell you something, they're, all the regulations are there. You don't have to take my word for it. Just call the Environmental Protection Agency and ask them what sort of paperwork you got to fill out to start up a mining operation today. You got to deal with the county, you got to deal with the state, you got to deal with state environmental protection or, or DEQ, you got to deal with the fish and game, you got to deal with the federal fish and game, uh, as well as the state fish and game, you've got to deal with the EPA, the coastal management zone people, the wetland people, all of these people have to be satisfied before you can start up. There's many, many rules and regulations. Even if you're going to take a sluice box, a hand sluice box out, you have to file a plan of operations with the Forest Service. And that's a written plan of operations in many cases. So some cases a verbal plan of operations is good where that you've got a ranger with a lot of common sense tell him I'm going to go in with a hand sluice box or a high banker I'm going to be working for the weekend I'm going to be leaving he say that's fine if you're going to be there two or three weeks well then I want a written plan of operations certainly if you're going to take in a larger piece of equipment what does it all boil down to then if the environment's protected under the current laws which it is why is there so much uproar and outrage to change the 1872 mining laws. Well, let me tell you why, folks, because it gives you a right of access. And they don't want you to have any of these rights because that makes them powerless over you. They don't have the authority over you then. Then you can go up and demand your right of access into this public land. And they don't want that. You know, 82% of the, of the state of Nevada or more is, is public land, you know, and, and, and two-thirds of the 11 western states. I know that you don't have a lot of public land in the east, ladies and gentlemen, because when those states were made states, uh, they didn't save any land for the federal government. Out here in the west, in the 11 western states, and you, no matter where you live, you own part of it, and you have a right of access. And isn't it funny that they get a a senator from, from Arkansas to, to put forth the opposition to the 1872 mining law, serve this country well, serve, serve you and I well, and they can add any regulation they want to. And, and I tell you, they have them all in place. And so when they point to them, to the spill over there in Colorado, the cyanide spill, this mining company went in there and they dumped cyanide and stuff like that. They either paid off some politician, some bureaucrat didn't do his job, or, or that maybe some uh, guy just went in and did it and then they found out about it later. But no amount of regulations are going to keep people from breaking the law. And, and, and throwing out your right of access and writing a whole bunch of new regulations is not going to prevent that sort of thing from happening because somebody didn't do their job because the regulations are there to prevent it now. And we say, well, we have all these old mine dumps to clean up. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, we do have some mine dumps to clean up, but we have a legacy from that too. The millions and millions of dollars worth of gold that was brought out allowed us to be the strong financial nation that we are today. You know, I mean, other people around the world can work, but we had the gold in the ground and our government had the foresight to give individuals the free access to it because they got gold, they got tons and tons of gold. They got, probably got more gold in Siberia than we got in California, but they don't have the climate necessary to cause the individual to go out and get it. The Russians are not lazy, but they're not stupid. If the guy says, well, you can go out and dig the gold up, but we're going to take it all away from you, then why the heck should I go and spend my time to dig it up? But we had the 1872 mining law and we had the climate to make it uh, available to the individual. He could enjoy the spoils of his labor and that's what's made this country strong and that's what these eggheads today are trying to take away and lock up, ladies and gentlemen, and if they're successful, our whole tradition will be down the down the tube and your right of access will be down the tube and it, ladies, let me, let me put it to you this way if you can't grow it you gotta mine it and we've got a tremendous storehouse of minerals in the United States we do not need to export import minerals mining is done cleaner in this country than it is anywhere else does it make sense to drive our mining industry down into some uh, other country where they don't have the environmental constraints if you're a real environmentalist you, you gotta have some serious reservations about that unless that you're you're completely in cahoots with these eggheads back there you know uh, of this thing. 
certainly we need some national parks and some of the organizations like the Sierra Club did some outstanding jobs in getting the national parks together in that whole system but there are some people that want to make the whole thing a national park and hire a million park rangers to do it and it's probably the park service that would like to see that these guys that bureaucracy feeds on itself you know we can only support so many of them as taxpayers and you and I know that and the thing for you to do is to join the Gold Prospectors Association get out and do some prospecting for yourself for it's good for you you know if you want to talk about something that's really good for you you know you get some exercise if the, the guy talked about turning over a rock and a $200 fine how many rocks did the Mississippi River turn over in its flood how many millions and billions of rocks was turned over by the floods in the Sierra this spring a guy turns over a rock like that you don't know whether that rock's been turned over or not and it doesn't hurt a thing and for these eggheads to get a hold of everything and to have their authority over you to be able to tell you no you can't do it well under the 1872 mining law out here in the west in California you got a right of access to a lot of this National Forest Service sure you've got to put up with the regulations but at least you have a right and and that precious few rights that we have we better hang on to because it don't say much for us as a people if we don't uh, let me tell you that when you join the GPA, you get a whole box of stuff. You can help us to pr preserve this tradition and get out there and do a little prospecting because, it, it, you know, you're not killing anything. You're not even killing a fish. You're not hunting. I mean, there's nothing wrong with that, but, but when you think about it, prospecting is one of the most docile things you can do, and, and you get some exercise. It's good for your body, and by golly, I'll tell you what, if you get lucky, you might get a little gold in your poke, and that's what it's all about. Ladies and gentlemen, you've been really kind to tune in to the Outdoor Channel and listen to Old Buzzard today and come out here. We're out in the middle of nowhere. We don't have a big fancy camera crew or anything. Uh, but uh, we're doing it, and you're watching, and that's what makes it all possible. So you keep on tuning in, and, and better still get up and give us a call on that 800 number and become a member. We need your membership. We need you as a member. We need your support.